Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to my friend, Lauren Petrie, everybody. Wow, you guys. Thank you. Boise, what is up? Come on, thank you for coming out. Yeah. I lived here, I used to live here for seven years. Wow, that's the appropriate response to that. I just moved here because I was trying to quit doing heroin. I didn't know how to get it here. No, it's cool, I just replaced the heroin with sex. You ever try to make a list of how many people you slept with? Anyone? That, that is some hard shit to do, okay? And I know because I tried, and I'm on day three. <laughs> and I am still remembering people. I don't know their names, I just know these messed up nicknames I gave them. I'm like, oh fuck, remember homeless guy? <laughs> Married guy in the Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. <laughs> Fat girl at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> I am seeing a guy now, and he is really good with his mouth. And I should have known that, because he almost weighs 300 pounds. He eats my pussy the same way he's eaten everything else in his life. Like he's looking for bacon. See, dating a fat guy is awesome because for every 10 pounds they lose, their dick grows an inch. It's like getting in early on an IPO. I got five new inches. Yep, I used to be a stripper. Sometimes people clap, sometimes they do what you just did. That's okay. Uh, stripping, stripping inspired me to do stand-up comedy. All right, stripping inspired me to do anything besides stripping. There's a lot of things they have in common. I still have to get up on a stage. I used to have to get totally shit-faced before I do my set. But there's major differences. Like, no one ever got an erection because someone was clever. Oh. Okay, unless you're a hipster, geez, all right? <laughs> We, we don't judge comics the same way we judge strippers, okay? But I think we should. So you'd be down at the rail, a girlfriend's just shaking her ass. You look over at your friend and you're like, I just didn't get her act. <laughs> she didn't have any good segues between her floor work and her pole tricks. And she didn't close well. <laughs> She had a really good opening. <laughs> you guys got the pussy joke. I'm proud of you. You ever just masturbate all day? Yes. Yes. All day. Don't judge me, okay? It's not like I meant to. I didn't have a list. I was like, go to the store, go to the bakery, masturbate all day. It just happens, okay? And I'm bisexual, so I'll jerk off to anything. <laughs> TV shows, The X-Files, right. Mulder and Scully. <laughs> you know, I think politics in this country are really backwards because it's legal in more countries to have, or more states to have sex with horses than it is to gay marry. Yeah, and the argument people make is like, well, if we let the gays marry, what's next? Marrying a horse? You ever notice the people that make that argument usually live out in the country? <laughs> and own horses? Look, nobody's gonna make you marry your horse. And in fact, I don't care if you marry your horse, but could you please stop fucking it? <laughs> I'm getting older. And everyone has a baby now. It's like the new spring accessory. Right? It's like, was getting a cat too mainstream for you? You had to make your own pet and name it something hipster? <laughs> I have a friend, okay? She just named her daughter Jupiter Indica. <laughs> How's that kid gonna rebel? <laughs> 
just by joining the actual workforce. <laughs> this is gonna be the first generation of judges and lawyers named after drugs and planets. <laughs> and people are like, Lauren, your biological clock is gonna catch up. You're gonna want a baby. Listen, I have a cat, okay? I love that cat. I rescued it, it was starving to death. I nursed it back to health. I spent about $400 a month on my cat. Love the shit out of that cat. And when it wakes me up at 5 a.m., I fantasize about splattering its brains all over the wall. <laughs> and that's why I shouldn't have a baby. <laughs> So I had to get sober, because I used to be a heroin addict, and I had to get a regular job, and people were like, Lauren, dude, heroin steals your soul. And I was like, have you tried working in customer service? <laughs> it's worse. And the customer service job I found is called webcamming. <laughs> You guys know about webcamming? Are there a lot of dates here? And you're like, no, I've never heard of it. I don't know what webcamming is. <laughs> webcamming is when you masturbate for married guys on the internet and they masturbate back at you. It's like masturbation tennis. <laughs> Day in my life, I'm jerking off for a guy on Skype and he's super into it. And he's like, yeah, baby, yeah. You just, you just do it the way you do it. Do it natural. You don't want me to do it the way I do it in my spare time. I know what you want. You want me to lie on my back and make the porn star face and be like, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. The way that I do it, I just lie on my stomach and dig in my vagina. Like I'm looking for the entrance to Narnia. <laughs> I haven't found a better way. Perks of my job, I had to learn how to squirt. Squirting is awesome, it's amazing, but it's fucking weird. Right? Every time I come, there is half a cup of water all over the bed. And when I first started doing it, I was like, where is it all coming from? Like, has that always been there? Should I be doing that before I weigh myself? And then I thought about all the benefits of squirting. Like, wait a minute. If I'm ever lost wandering in a desert. <laughs> you know, or shipwrecked on an island. And you guys are with me. I'm a hydration station. <laughs> Do you want to live? <laughs> they didn't do that on Survivor. <laughs> I think they should. It'd be the, the Playboy edition. We have to make her squirt to live. It's crazy. <laughs> it's horrible. So, I don't have any health insurance at all, but I have the most amazing data plan on my phone. Okay. It is good, it is unlimited data. And I was recently upgrading my phone and the sales guy was all uppity with me. I was talking to him about it. He's like, oh, you're safe. We can't legally take your data plan away from you. You can't legally take my phone plan away from me? So what you're saying in the day and age of the erosion of civil liberties, you can throw me in jail without due process, you can search me without a warrant, you can touch my bathing suit area at the airport, but if I'm down on the ground getting pepper sprayed by the SWAT team, I've still got my 4G coverage! <laughs> my phone plan has more protection than my civil rights. That's bad.
head. <laughs> See, I used to be a homeless heroin junkie, which is awesome. And uh, my friends are always worried. I moved back to Portland. They were worried I was going to be a homeless heroin junkie again. Uh, and I was like, listen, you guys, I'm way too lazy to be a drug addict. And they don't get it, because they see drug addicts lying on the side of the road. And they're like, they sleep all the time. They're fucking lazy. Okay, that's after we get the drugs. Before we get the drugs, there is a carnival of activity that takes place. Have you ever tried to buy heroin downtown on a weekday? Let me give you a rundown of how that works, okay? First, you have to go downtown. You have to get bus tickets. Then you have to go to Fred Meyer's. You'll vacuum cleaners over and over again and not get caught. It's fucking crazy. And then you have to go pawn them. And you have to go find your heroin dealer's trailer park. But he moves it every four hours. So it becomes like a heroin park, trailer park scavenger hunt. And then once you find it, you have to meet his shitty kids and his stupid wife. Then you have to shoot up in front of everyone to prove that you're not a cop. And by that time, the buses aren't running. You just pass out in a fucking bush. <laughs> Dude, I am just gonna stay home and masturbate on the internet. <laughs> Way less work. <laughs> so this is the part of the show where I talk about stripping and making pizza. <laughs> Not at the same time, okay? I didn't make pizza with my tits and serve slices with lap dances. I'd be a millionaire. I worked at two places at the same time. In Boise, one of them, you guys all know, it's the local pizza place that's open till 4 a.m. It's the only one. Let's just call it Pie Hell. Let's call it Pie Hell. Pie Hell. There is no bouncer, okay? This place is the Wild West of pizza. It's so true. This girl, yeah. I worked there for five years, the late shift. I got, a girl took her shoe off and beat me with it at a pizza shop. I watched a guy take a shit in the hallway. You know what goes really great with a slice of Hawaiian? Taking a shit in the hallway. Yeah. I've seen all of you people throw up all over each other and piss on everything, and I had to clean it up. So I was like the drunk mom that was stripping part-time to make ends meet. I'd show up at Walmart at 5 a.m. covered up in pizza sauce and glitter. The old lady at the register would be like, what do you do? And I'd be like, you don't want to know. There'd be a line, around the block and this asshole in an affliction shirt who smells like axe and shame you know the type he's asking me he's like what what's on every single slice and I'm like Jesus Christ alright that one's pepperoni that one's potato bacon that one's sausage and pepperoni that one's pretty pretty princess is all the different meats we have on the menu and I list all of them and then he goes yeah um I'm just gonna have a slice of cheese <laughs> I'm just gonna have a restraining order because I'm gonna cut your fucking balls off. <laughs> Coincidentally, I got one 75 cent raise in five years. And it turns out that my boss was sleeping with many of the employees. What did they get? Promotions! And free tickets to Tree Fort. <laughs> Look, I was already paying my bills with my pussy at one job. I wasn't going to do it at this one. I watched UT people take shits in the hallway. You're all a bunch of dirty, dirty, dirty people. I moved out of Boise in December 2012. That was a weird New Year's. Do you guys remember that? The Mayan apocalypse. That was the most boring apocalypse ever. <laughs> the only thing that happened on December 21st, 2012 is a bunch of really dumb girls got tricked into doing anal for the first time. <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> Boyfriends are like, come on, babe, it's the end of the world. Let me put it in your butt. Like, that's better than the way they usually trick me into it and they just act like they missed. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, hey, and they're like, oh, sorry, babe. <laughs> I know I'm dating Keanu Reeves. <laughs> totally messed up. I'm a complete alcoholic. I'm a total alcoholic. I have two levels of drinking. I have zero 
or let's drink all the whiskey, set everything on fire, and fuck everybody. <laughs> Two levels. So I made a lot of New Year's resolutions. Since January, I've lost 40 pounds, which is awesome. <laughs> Haven't had any drinks. <laughs> still doing a lot of cocaine. I'm still doing... <laughs> Still doing all the non-caloric drugs, and I'll do all the free drugs, okay? Because they're free. I feel like it's un-American not to do free drugs. And I have a shirt that I sell after the show to support this habit of mine. And it just says, uh, I do free drugs. <laughs> you should buy it so we all do free drugs together. <laughs> it were, I'm not kidding. You will get drugs if you wear this shirt. I just want to make sure it's... It's a true thing. That's my big selling point. Besides the fact that I'm a fucking comedian and I need money. If you guys remember uh, before Plan B was behind, the, when it was like you had to go talk to the pharmacist to get it? Those were dark days. Dark days. You'd walk in and the pharmacist would be like, the whore's back. We got a whore on aisle one. But like, listen, I'm sorry, okay? My vagina eats condoms for breakfast. It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm trying to do the right thing here. I'm not trying to drive to Oregon for an abortion. I can't even afford gas. What am I talking about? They all, they're all judgy, and I'm like, listen, Mormon Barbie. Why don't you spend a little less time thinking about your, like, your magic underwear and my cum habits? <laughs> You want to baptize the dead? I've got some in my throat. You want to take a look? They're right here. They're back here. So I had to go to AA for a while. <laughs> we were in the share circle and we're talking about our triggers for drinking, right? Gets to be my turn. First thing that comes out of my whore mouth well, nothing makes me want to go on a three-day bender like having a late period. <laughs> no, it's a fun game. You get three bottles of Jack Daniels and two eight balls of cocaine. And on day three, if I get a chunky period, I win. Oh. Oh, it costs about as much as an abortion. My way is a lot more fun. Should that be a, a size of tampon that they make after, after super miscarriage? You guys are horrible. I love it. I'll tell you a story at why I quit drinking. You ever woken up out of a drunk blackout in the middle of a lap dance? Is it just me again? Because before I was a stripper, I was a customer. So I wake up and there's stripper ass right here. It's right in my face. And that's cool because it's sparkly. It smells like Hawaiian Tropic. But I want to get out of there. Like, I don't know how long I've been there. I'm trying to be polite. So I ask the girl, I'm like, how much do I owe you? She looks at me in her stupid stripper voice and she's like, Oh my God, $300. You and me both know I do not owe this bitch $300. This is bullshit. I don't have any ground to stand on. I'm a drunk person. So I had money at the time. I hand her the money. And then she looks at me and she goes, don't you want to ask me about my extras? What is this, T-Mobile? I'm six, so I'm like, yeah, tell me about your extras. And she goes, well, for 50 more dollars, I'll let you stick your finger in my ass. Neat. How is that an extra for me? <laughs> like, you might get off, I just get this messed up case of smelly finger. <laughs> so I say no. And I go out on the floor and I realize my boyfriend's just been loose in a strip club, right? I don't know where he is. I don't trust him. I'm frantic. I go looking for him. I finally find him. The first thing I want to do is just to smell his fucking fingers. <laughs> I moved to Portland. Uh, it's a weird place. 
It's the only place where you can ride a vegan bicycle to a vegan strip club. <laughs> and if you get lucky enough to take a girl home, they won't even blow you because they don't accept meat products. <laughs> self-conscious friends and I can't take them out to eat anywhere because nothing's healthy enough. They open up the menu and they're like, oh my god, Lauren, this has got hydrogenated oils and it's not even organic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know anyone like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know who, who's worse than those people? Health-conscious drug addicts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was smoking some meth and... This bitch was like, oh, don't smoke it off the tinfoil, you're gonna get cancer. <laughs> it's fucking meth! Okay? I'm pretty sure it's made of cancer. <laughs> you could go to Whole Foods and smoke that meth off kale. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, and I only do fair trade cocaine. <laughs> The economy is really, really bad right now. It's really bad. But on webcam, I can make $120 in 15 minutes. Because there's a guy in Pennsylvania that likes to watch me drink a glass of cum. No, he thinks it's cum. It's egg whites and Greek yogurt from Safeway. <laughs> $7.95, okay? <laughs> this guy thinks that I have guys lined up at my house like labor ready and I spent all day just milking dicks. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. I've been Lauren Petrie. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Give it up for Lauren Petrie, everybody.